Where Star's land began with a woman named Hanyo Rum looking for a place to protect herself from the rain. While she was looking for that place, her necklace was attracted to a hand of a man named Lee Su Yan. Su Yan coldly returned her necklace and left that place. It was the first day for Yo Rum to work in the passenger service team at Incheon International Airport, but she came late that day. She used to work in the transportation team, but she was warned by her superior for several times because of her clumsiness. She made many mistakes such as kicking passengers, grabbing them by collars, cursing at them and coming late to work. Yo Rum promised to young Siu Kun, the manager of the passenger service team, that she wouldn't come late to work, grab the passengers by collars or curse at them anymore. One of the employees informed Siu Kun that there was a fight between an employee and a passenger at the check-in counter. After Siu Kun heard that, she asked Yo Rum to take care of that problem. A senior employee named Gong Sung Kiel asked Sudian to accompany Yo Rum because he doubted that she could take care of that problem by herself. At the check-in counter, a passenger went berserk because he refused to check in by using the available check-in desk. Yo Rum approached that passenger and tried to calm him down, but it was useless. That passenger was getting even more angry. He continued to destroy the check-in desk and curse at Yo Rum. When he was about to hit Yo Rum, Sudian suddenly came to that place and stopped him. Su Yan said that using verbal and physical violence was a crime. He also warned him because he had destroyed three check-in counters that were worth $60,000. He asked him to take responsibility for his action by replacing the check-in counters that he had destroyed. After that, the security guards took that passenger with them. Yo Rum approached Su Yan and reminded him about their meeting that morning. She thought that Su Yan was working in a legal team because he seemed to understand about the law and the price of the check-in counters. Su Yan showed her his ID card and introduced himself. Yurum was surprised when she found out that Su Yan was working in the same team as her. Su Kun asked Sung Chiul to remove the partitions in the tax-free area. Sung Chiul told Yo Rum to take it to the storeroom. Su Kun also asked Su Yan to become Yo Rum's mentor until she could understand about how to work in the passenger service team. After that, Yo Rum and Su Yan went to the tax-free area and removed the partitions there together. Su Yan told Yo Rum about where the storeroom was, but she was still lost and even took two hours to find the storeroom. Sung Kiel berated her for that. During the break time, Yo Rum told her close friend, Ko Eun Su, that Su Yan made her lost in purpose by telling her the most difficult way to go to the storeroom. Eun Su asked her if she was lost because she had difficulty understanding and following directions and not because of Su Yan. He informed her that Su Yan graduated from KIST, one of the most prestigious universities in South Korea. He also said that Su Yan had a perfect TOESC score and the highest score in the pre-employment assessment test. Despite that, Su Yan was known as an arrogant worker who refused to get along and have a lunch with other members of the passenger service team since he worked there. Recently, it was rumored that Su Yan saved a child who was almost hit by a trolley full of suitcases. Because of that incident, Su Yan became popular among the employees who were working in the tax-free area. In another place, Su Yan was trying to help a mother who lost her son at the airport. Su Yan contacted Yo Rum and asked her to help them to find that woman's son. That woman's son was 30 years old and was named Jun Wu. That man suffered from schizophrenia, but he forgot to take his medicine. As soon as Siu Kun heard that, she ordered her team to find that man soon. That man was wearing a yellow shirt right now. They searched the Terminal 6 because that man planned to go to Phuket, Thailand. They also used the security cameras to find that man. Su Dian told Yo Rum that he would search the men's restroom to find that man. He asked her to wait outside. While waiting for Su Yan, Yo Rum saw a man wearing a yellow shirt. She immediately followed that man to the restroom. Jun Wu was mad at a worker because he couldn't find his airplane. Su Kun saw him through the security camera. She quickly ordered her team to go to that place and capture him soon. Because of his illness, Jun Wu began to beat that worker up. Yo Rum approached him and tried to stop him from beating that worker up. Jun Wu took a partition and tried to hit Yo Rum with it. But fortunately, Su Yan suddenly came to that place and saved Yo Rum. Su Yan gave Jun Wu his medicine. He told him that his mother asked him to give that medicine to him. Yo Rum noticed that the partition that Jun Wu used to attack her was bent. Not long after that, people began to come to that place. Su Yan got rid of that broken partition when those people came. Su Kun approached Su Yan and asked him if he was alright. After that, they took the wounded worker to the infirmary. Meanwhile, Su Yan took Jun Wu to his mother. The team manager of Incheon International Airport Integrated Operations, Mo Jung Hoon, showed Siu Kun the CCTV footage when Jun Woo tried to attack Yo Rum. Siu Kun asked Jung Hoon to keep that CCTV footage secret. After that, she came to see Su Yan and told him that the incident earlier was captured by the security camera. She advised him to ignore everything that happened around him if he wanted to continue to live a normal life like he wanted. In the evening, 
Yo Rum ran into Su Yan. She told him that they had met before, but Su Yan said that he had never seen or met her before. Yo Rum thanked him for saving her life even though he didn't remember her. She still believed that they had met before. The next scene revealed about the time when Su Yan was waiting at a bus stop. That day, she was going to go to Incheon International Airport to attend the job interview. But suddenly, a car accident happened. Fortunately, Su Yan came to that place and saved her. Back to the present time, Su Yan found a paperclip getting attached to his arm. The next day, Incheon International Airport received a call. The man who called them warned them that there would be a bombing soon. Odi Ki, head officer at security service team, ordered his team to search the Terminal 1 at that airport. While Yo Rum was working, she saw a man throwing a black plastic bag into a trash can. She thought that that man looked suspicious. After that man left, she checked that plastic bag and called Su Yan. Not long after that, Su Yan, Sum Chiol, and other workers arrived in that place. They checked that plastic bag and found out that it contained several gold bars. They took those gold bars with them. After they left, Su Yan reminded Yo Rum about the basic working rule at that airport, which was that they were not allowed to touch anything that got thrown, especially if it looked suspicious. They needed to report it first because it could contain harmful material, such as bomb or hazardous biochemical weapon. Yo Rum smiled when she heard that. She was happy because she thought that Su Yan worried about her. Not long after that, a married couple approached that trash can and looked for the gold bars that were already taken by Sung Kiel and other workers. Dae Ki contacted Choi Mu Ja, the manager of security service team, and told him that he found a suspicious suitcase. He then ordered his team to put the partitions in that area. Not long after that, the bomb squad arrived in that place. They carefully checked the suitcase, but they didn't find any bomb there. Turned out that suitcase belonged to the married couple who was looking for the gold bars earlier. They claimed that they wanted to go to Japan to go on holiday. After Dae Ki checked their tickets and passports, he reported what he found to Mu Ja. Muja asked him to return their suitcase and go to the security room. While Yu Rum was removing the partitions in that area, she heard that that married couple was looking for gold bars inside a black plastic bag. Yu Rum was surprised when she heard that. She immediately looked for Su Yan and told him about it. Su Yan said that it was another department's job to take care about that problem and not their job. But Yu Rum insisted on reporting the married couple because she thought that they were trying to smuggle those gold bars. She then came to see Mu Jia and told him that that married couple was trying to smuggle gold bars. Dae Ki suddenly remembered that the brokers usually gave free trips to those who smuggled gold bars from South Korea into other countries. After that, Yo Rum looked for Su Yan. She saw him asking a store employee to get rid of the banner that was not allowed to be displayed in front of their store. Su Yan told Yo Rum that that morning, there was a child who fell down and got seriously wounded because he ran into that banner. That child was then treated for his wound. Because of that, he missed his airplane and his mother couldn't attend her sister's wedding party. Su Yan reminded Yo Rum that they needed to finish doing their job on time and that it was their team's priority. Yo Rum was annoyed when she heard that. She thought that what Su Yan was doing was nothing like prioritizing their job since he refused to report those smugglers. She called him selfish and evil for that. After cursing at Su Yan, Yo Rum left that place. When Su Yan was about to drink water, he heard his coworker talk to someone on the phone. That man told them that the bomb they were looking for was inside an airplane that was going to leave the airport in 30 minutes. After saying that, he hanged up the call. Muja ordered his team to contact the bomb squad and delay the flight. In another room, Sudian turned on the lamp and found a boy there. He told that boy that he heard everything he said. That boy was a middle school student named Sun Hoon. Sun Hoon told Sudian to leave that place. He threatened that he would end his life if Sudian made him mad. Sudian grabbed Sun Hoon and wrestled him. Muja saw them through the security camera. The bomb squad checked the airplane that was suspected to have a bomb inside. But after they searched that airplane, they didn't find anything there. Su Yan took Sun Hoon to the police station that was located at the airport. Turned out Sun Hoon's parents were the married couple who was trying to smuggle the gold bars. Sun Hoon revealed that he threatened to bomb the airplane so that their trip to Japan got cancelled. He admitted that he didn't want to go to Japan by using the free tickets that they received by smuggling those gold bars. Not long after that, Muja arrived at police station and asked about Su Yan. After that, Su Yan returned to the store and reminded the store employee again to get rid of the banner that was displayed in front of their store. He saw Yo Rum and apologized to her for being rude to her. Suddenly, the banner in front of the store fell down and almost hit a boy who stood in front of Yo Rum. After Yo Rum saw that she finally understood about the reason why Su Yan asked her to focus on her main task, she then asked the store employee to get rid of the banner. Muja came to see Seo Kun and told her that Su Yan had captured the middle school student who threatened to bomb the airplane. 
Mu Jia admitted that he was amazed by what Su Bian did, he even checked his personal background. Su Kun told him to leave Su Bian alone because he was the most competent worker in his team and that he just wanted to live a normal life. She also asked Mu Jia to forget and keep everything he knew about Su Bian's secret. While Yul Ren was having a lunch at cafeteria, she saw Su Bian having a lunch by himself. Mu Jia approached Su Yan and told him that he saw what he did in the CCT footage. Su Yan said that he had been practicing judo, taekwondo, and boxing. After saying that, he left that place. Yo Rum followed him and gave him a bread because she noticed that he hadn't eaten anything during the lunch. She also apologized to him for cursing at him earlier. While she was preparing instant noodles, she accidentally spilled it on Su Yan's hand. Yo Rum panicked when she saw Su Yan's hand turning into red. Su Bian told her that she didn't have to worry about him because his right hand was numb, which made him unable to feel any pain. The next day, Siu Kun was transferred to Terminal 2. She asked Sung Chiul Yo Rum and Su Yan to join her in the passenger service team at Terminal 2. Siu Kun introduced her team to Siu and Wu, the team manager of airport planning and operation. Su Yan only nodded his head when he greeted in Wu. After that, Siu Kun was having a meeting. It was revealed that she was not the only one who was transferred to Terminal 2. Turned out Mu Jia and his team were also transferred to Terminal 2. Su Dian heard Yo Rum talk to Eun Su, her close friend who was working in the Mori management team, on phone. Yo Rum told Eun Su that she didn't like to get transferred to Terminal 2 because In Wu was also working there. She said that In Wu once cut her salaries for two months because she cursed at a passenger who sexually harassed her. Not only that, she also had to face Park Tae He, the manager of airport mooring management team, who used to become her superior. She thought that Tae didn't like her. After Yo Rum finished talking to Eun Soo on phone, Su Bian asked her to check the broken trolleys with him. Su Bian advised her to speak what was on her mind and what she believed was right so that they wouldn't keep blaming her. Yo Rum said that it was not easy for her to do that. After that, she divided the area where they would check the broken trolleys. In the baggage reclaim area, a woman was waiting for her suitcase. Her suitcase was labeled the yellow sticker, which meant that the content of that suitcase exceeded the tax-free allowance, which was $600. That woman panicked and took her suitcase to the restroom. In the restroom, she removed the yellow sticker from her suitcase. Now Yum Ju, a member of the security service team, saw that woman and talked to her. That woman thought that she was a fellow passenger. She told her that the airport customs officer put that yellow sticker on her suitcase. Yum Ju called the customs officers and reported that woman to them. She asked them to go to the restroom soon. That woman was mad when she found out that Yum Ju was a member of the security service team. While Yo Rum was checking the broken trolleys, she heard Young Ju and that woman have an argument. She tried to calm them down, but she failed to do it. That woman tried to throw that yellow sticker into the toilet, but Young Ju stopped her from doing it. That woman was mad and bit Young Ju's hand. Yo Rum tried to break up their fight, but that woman slapped her face instead. Young Ju attacked that woman and wrestled her. Not long after that, the customs officers finally arrived in that place. Young Ju told them about what happened. After that, those customs officers checked that woman's suitcase and found many bags and shoes that that woman bought abroad inside. That woman was so mad about the incident that took place in the restroom that had left a scar on her beautiful face. She asked those customs officers to apologize to her. Hugh Young Ran, the team manager of commercial facilities, told Siu Kum about the incident that took place in the restroom. She also berated Yo Rum for using violence on the passenger. Yo Rum tried to tell Siu Kum that that incident was not their fault. Not long after that, Mu Jia arrived in that place. He said that the passenger service team and the security service team would take care of this problem. Young Ran warned him that this was a serious problem because that woman was the daughter of the congressman. That woman also planned to sue their airport because her face was wounded. Yo Rum said that that woman was the one who screamed, bit a hand of the security service team's member and slapped her face first. Mu Jia asked her about the member of the security service team who was with her during the incident. Yo Rum looked at Dae Ki and said that she didn't know who was the member of the security service team who was with her during the incident. She did that because she didn't want Young Ju to be in trouble. Dae Ki called Young Ju and asked her about what had happened. After that, Young Ju returned to the airport. Su Yan went to immigration office to fix the broken water dispenser. When he was there, he heard that woman talk to her lawyer on phone. Kwan Hee Son, the director of Terminal 2 Inchon International Airport, who was also Siu Kun's superior, was mad at Siu Kun after he received a report about the incident that took place in the restroom earlier. He heard that a member of the passenger service team attacked the daughter of the congressman. Siu Kun told him that they were still investigating this case. She tried to defend Yo Rum, but Hee Sung didn't care about it. He told them to apologize to the daughter of the congressman to solve this problem soon. Siu Kun refused to do that because she believed that her staff was not wrong. 
Yo Rum felt guilty when she saw Siu Kun and His Sung having an argument. She finally told His Sung that she would apologize to the daughter of the congressman. Yo Rum and Siu Kun finally went to immigration office. Su Yan was the first to apologize to that woman. When it was Yo Rum's turn to apologize to that woman, she asked her to apologize for the incident that took place in the restroom. That woman was getting even more angry when she heard what Yo Rum said. She threatened that she would call her lawyer and sue all of them. Su Yan played the record of the conversation between that woman and her lawyer. She recorded everything that they talked on phone. From that record, they found out that that woman asked her lawyer not to tell her father about this incident because she was afraid that her father would get angry at her. She also told her lawyer that she would threaten the airport officers so that they would get scared and apologize to her. She did that so that they would let her take her suitcase and leave the airport without paying the tax. That woman was angry when she heard that record. She thought that they had trapped her. Not long after that, Yeonju finally arrived at the airport. Yeo-rum told her that the situation had been under control so she didn't have to go to immigration office. In immigration office, Su kun told that woman to pay her tax if she didn't want them to sue her. After that, Yeo-rum apologized to Su kun for becoming trouble for her. Su kun told her that it was her job to protect her workers. She said that she was happy to have a worker who had a courage to stand up for herself like Yeo-rum. Su Yeon listened to their conversation secretly. Suddenly, a robot vacuum cleaner approached and followed him. He was busy avoiding that robot vacuum cleaner that he almost collided with Yo-Rum. Yo-Rum thanked him for encouraging her to speak what was on her mind. She said that it was because of her that she had the courage to stand up for herself. su Yun asked her why she didn't ask him anything about his numb right hand. Yo-Rum said that she didn't want him to answer the question that would make him uncomfortable. su Yun told her that he once had an accident. After work day, Ki and Yeonju thanked Yo-Rum for what she did that day. Yo Rum asked them to have a drink together with her and Yeon Su. At Fox Bride Star Cafe, Mr. Jang was examining Su Yen's hand. It appeared that Su Yen's hand was magnetic that allowed it to attract many items. The next day, a man named Ian Santos was not allowed to check in at the airport because his passport was fake. Ian begged the worker there to allow him to check in because he wanted to see his wife and his baby, but that worker refused to allow him to do it. In the waiting room, Yeomju told Dae Ki about a pregnant woman named Mary who looked like she was in pain. Yeomju asked Yo Rum to help her. Mary refused to be taken to the infirmary because she was waiting for her husband. Yo Rum calmly told her that she would find her husband soon. In the elevator, Su Dian ran into In Wu. It was the first time for them to meet each other after 12 years. It was revealed that In Wu was Su Dian's stepbrother because In Wu's father and Su Dian's mother were married. Su Dian coldly told In Wu to pretend that they didn't know each other. After he left the elevator, he received a call from Yo-Rum. Yo-Rum asked him to help her to find Mary's husband, a man named Ian Santos. She also sent the picture of Ian to him. She explained that Mary would deliver her baby in the airport's infirmary. In immigration office, Ian begged the workers there to allow him to check in because his baby would be delivered soon, but they still refused to allow him to do it because they needed to obey the security law. After searching for a while, Sunian finally found Ian in the waiting room. He called Yo Rum and told her that Ian was not allowed to check in. After Yo Rum heard that, she told Yeonju about it. Yeonju allowed Ian to talk to Mary. Ian apologized to his wife because he couldn't accompany her when she delivered their baby. Yo Rum asked Stubion if there was something else that they could do to help Ian and Mary to reunite. Stubion said that there was nothing that they could do about it because immigration office was the one who made the decision. Yo Rum said that she would talk to the manager of the immigration office. Sudian didn't allow her to do it, he said that she would cross the boundaries and that there was nothing that would be changed. But Yo Rum refused to listen to him. She left that place and continued to do what she was doing. Sudian called Seo Kum and told her about what happened. While Ayam was leaving the restroom, he pushed an employee who was guarding that place and ran away. Sudian saw him and chased him right away. Imu saw Sudian chasing Ayan. After thinking for a while, he decided to follow them. Ayan begged Sudian to allow him to meet his wife. Su Yan told him that it was not him who had the right to make the decision. He also asked him not to cause more problems. Ian then attacked him by using a pen. Su Yan removed the pen that was used by Ian to attack him. Ian tried to push him away, but he fell down instead. Fortunately, Su Yan managed to save him. And Mu was surprised when he saw it. Not long after that, the security guards arrived in that place. Su Yan immediately hit his bloody hand and the pen. Meanwhile, Yo Rung showed Siu Kun the picture of Mary's baby who had just been delivered. After Siu Kun saw that picture, she came to see Jung Hoon and asked him to allow Ian to meet his wife and his baby. But Jung Hoon didn't care about it, he refused to change his decision. Yo Rung told Su Yan that he was right, there was nothing that would be changed. She was confused about what was going on. 
She wondered about what boundary that would be crossed if a father met with his baby. After Suyun heard what Yo Rum said, he covered his hand with a duct tape and called Dae Ki. He asked Dae Ki to take Mary and her baby to Ayan. Dae Ki agreed to help him, he didn't care if what he was doing violated the law at his workplace and that he would be interrogated for it. Because of Dae Ki's help, Mary, Ayan, and their baby could finally reunite. Yo Rum cried when she saw them reuniting. Jung Hoon saw them and wondered about what they were doing there. He called their managers and told them about them. Dae Ki finally admitted his mistake and so did Soo Yeon. Jung Hoon asked them to take responsibility for what they had done. Suddenly, Soo Koon raised her hand. She said that she would take responsibility for this incident. She said that she was the one who ordered them to do what they did. Muja also said the same. An employee told them that Ayan would have a flight in 10 minutes, but Jung Hoon said that Ayan was not allowed to have a flight before they finished interrogating him. He said that Ayan and his wife needed to be interrogated first, so they needed to keep them together in the interrogation room. They could return to the Philippines in the next flight after they finished being interrogated. Because they still needed to be interrogated, Jung Hoon finally allowed them to wait together in the interrogation room. While Su Yim was working, his hand was being magnetic by attracting another item. He quickly covered that item with the paper so that Yo Rum wouldn't see it. In his room, and Wu was checking Su Yan's personal background. He found out that Su Yan was using a prosthetic hand because he had a physical disability. An airplane that was approaching Inchon International Airport suddenly caught a fire. Un Su received a report about that fire incident. Other employees of Inchon International Airport also received a text message about that fire incident. As soon as they found out about that fire incident, they returned to the airport. The security team, the fire trucks, and the ambulance were sent to the runway. On the airplane, the flight attendants asked the passengers to secure their seatbelts. After a while, the airplane finally managed to land safely on the ground. The flight attendants checked on all passengers to make sure if they were all right. The fire trucks surrounded the airplane and began to extinguish the fire there. Sudian noticed that Yo Rum looked worried. He saw her heading to the runway and followed her right away. Yo Rum told him that her mother was one of the passengers of that airplane. Siu Kum instructed her team to take the passengers who managed to survive to the nearest waiting room and give them food. Because of that fire incident, all flights at Inchon International Airport were cancelled. Su Yevon called Siu Kum and told her that Yo Rum's mother was on that airplane. Siu Kum told him that that airplane had successfully landed on the ground and that they were still trying to extinguish the fire on that airplane. Yo Rum asked Siu Kum to allow her to help others on that airplane, but Siu Kum didn't allow her to do it. She asked her to wait for her mother in the waiting room instead. Sudian asked Yo Rum if she wanted him to accompany her in the waiting room. Yo Rum said that she could wait there by herself. Sudian finally decided to go to the airplane that caught fire. He called Yo Rum and asked for the name of her mother. He said that he was tasked to help the passengers who managed to survive. On the airplane, there was a man who jumped the Ku. Yoon Hai Won, Yo Rum's mother, warned that man and told him that the elders and the children needed to be prioritized. She asked that man to wait in the back line. She didn't care if that man was mad at her. Su Yan asked every passenger who got off the airplane if their name was Hai Won. From a distance, Yum Ju noticed him and what he was doing. Suddenly, there was a shaking on the airplane. The man who jumped the coup earlier pushed Hai Won's body away that she fell down and got injured in the forehead. After that, he jumped the coup again and got on the bus. Su Yan received a report that there was a passenger who got injured. A flight attendant found Hai Won and helped her. Not long after that, Su Yeon arrived in that place. He helped Hai Won to treat her wound and gave her a glass of water. When he took the glass of water back from Hai Won, his hand suddenly became numb again. This time, he couldn't feel or move his hand. Suddenly, the medical team arrived in that place. Su Yeon immediately ran off and hid. The medical team told the security team that the wounded passenger had received first aid. After that, the security team helped to evacuate Hai Won from the airplane. Yeon Ju saw Su Yeon hiding in that place. Su Yan tried to move his hand, but he failed to do that. Siu Kun and Mu Jie found out that all passengers managed to survive. They were glad and relieved when they heard that. Siu Kun had cooperated with the media about how they would report this incident. In the waiting room, Yo Rum was busy giving food and blankets to the passengers. Siu Kun approached her and told her that her mother was a little injured and would arrive soon by using the last bus. Yo Rum was happy and relieved because she could finally see her mother. She immediately hugged her mother when she saw her. Su Yan watched them from a distance. Yeon Ju saw him leaving that place. Not long after that, all flights at Inchon International Airport returned to normal. Yo Rum called her mother who was on her way home. Her mother said that she was grateful to her friend for helping her to treat her wound when she was on airplane. When she was on airplane, Su Yan asked her what her name was. She asked him about who he was and Su Yan answered that he was Yo Rum's friend. 
Young Ram asked Day Ki if he was the one who helped her mother on the airplane. Namju saw that Astrid asked Sudian about it. Yo Rum then tried to call Sudian, but Sudian didn't answer her call. Not long after that, Mr. Jang arrived in that place. He came to pick Sudian up because Sudian was still unable to move his hand. Yo Rum saw Sudian's bag on his chair. Sung Chiu was mad because Sudian didn't come when he asked him for help. Su Kun told him that Sudian was not feeling well. She said that he sent her a text message and told her about it. After Yo Rum heard that, she finally decided to return Su Yan's bag to Su Yan. Seo Kun visited Fox Bride Star Cafe, but the door was locked. She worried about Su Yan. Im Wu saw her and asked her about what she was doing there. Seo Kun said that she just wanted to have a drink at her favorite cafe. She asked Im Wu back about what he was doing there. Im Wu told her that 12 years ago, he used to visit that cafe to have a dinner with a friend whom he had thought of as his brother. But unfortunately, one evening, he had an accident that left his friend severely injured. They had never met and talked to each other since that incident. But recently, that friend suddenly showed up in front of him. Imu asked Siu Kun about the reason why she asked Sunyan to work at Terminal 2. Siu Kun answered that it was because Sunyan was a competent worker. Imu said that Sunyan lost his ability to move his hands and legs because of that accident. He said that it was impossible for Sunyan to walk and move his hands. Siu Kun said that sometimes there were things that couldn't be explained with logic and could only be explained with magic. And that magic happened to Su Yan. She asked Inwu to stop talking about Su Yan's disability. Mr. Jang examined Su Yan's prosthetic hand and found out that there was a problem with the conductors. He said that it would take a half a day to repair those conductors. So he asked Su Yan to take a break from his work the next day. Suddenly, Su Yan received a text message from Yo Rum. In that text message, Yo Rum asked Su Yan to meet her at the cafe when they ran into each other when it was raining back then. Su Yan didn't know about what to do, he didn't know if he should meet Yo Rum at that cafe or not. At that cafe, Yo Rum was waiting for Su Yan until it was raining. Su Yan finally decided to go to that cafe to meet Yo Rum because it was raining. Yo Rum asked him about what happened to his hand. She worried about him because she heard that he was feeling unwell. Su Yan coldly told her that it was not her business. After saying that, he left that place. Yo Rum asked him if he was the one who helped to treat her mother's wound on the airplane, but Su Yan said no. Yo Rum said that Young Ju saw him on that airplane. She asked him about the reason why he was doing that. She asked him if he did it because he liked her. Su Yan said yes and left that place. Yo Rum finally returned to the airport. Un Sub noticed that she kept leaving and returning to the airport and that she looked confused. He approached her and asked her about what she was doing. Yo Rum told him that Su Yan liked her. Un Suv asked her if she and Su Yan were already dating. Yo Rum said that she didn't have time to date someone, especially if that person was her co-worker. She thought that she would be stressful if she dated her co-worker. She said that she would talk to Su Yan about this problem the next day. In his room, Su Yan checked his bookshelf. He used his prosthetic hand and looked at the mirror. After that, he visited Mr. Jang and asked him to repair his prosthetic hand now because he wanted to go to work the next day. The next day, He Sung was having a meeting with other managers. In that meeting, He Sung thanked them for successfully taking care of the fire incident on that airplane. He was glad because they didn't receive any complaint from the airlines, the passengers, or the passengers' families. Im Wu told He Sung that there was an employee who had first-degree physical disability, and it seemed that that disabled employee didn't use usual prosthetic hand and leg. He asked Mu Jia if those prosthetic hand and leg had been carefully checked and proven safe to use. Muja said that it was not their business to check the prosthetic that was used by their disabled employee because it concerned their privacy. Siu Kun asked In Wu why he considered prosthetic that was used by their disabled employees harmful. In Wu didn't answer her and kept asking Muja to investigate it. He suddenly asked Muja to investigate it and inform him about the result of his investigation by this weekend. While Siu Kun and Muja were leaving that room, Siu Kun told Muja that if he investigated Su Yan's prosthetic, then Su Yan would leave their workplace because he didn't want people to find out about his health condition. She said that all Su Yan wanted was just to work and live like a normal person. But Muja told her that he couldn't do anything but to do what his superior asked him. Meanwhile, Su Yan and Yo Rum were checking Terminal 2 together. Yo Rum told Su Yan that she couldn't believe that he said that he liked her. She had no idea why he liked her because she was just an ordinary woman. She thought that she couldn't do anything right, unlike Su Yan who was great at doing everything. She made it clear to Su Yan that even though he said that he liked her, they were not dating because they had been known each other for only three weeks. Su Yan told her that he had never thought of them that way, but he believed that anyone could genuinely like someone even though they had been known each other for only three weeks, three days or even three seconds. He said that everyone had different memory about the first time they met someone. 
Yo-Ram remembered that they first met each other when Su Yan saved her when she was waiting at the bus stop one year ago. But Su Yan remembered that he saw Yo-Ram for the first time when Yo-Ram's father sent him her picture. One year ago, before Su Yan attended the job interview at Incheon International Airport, she visited Fox Bride Star Cafe to have a lunch there. It was the first time for Su Yan and Yo-Ram to meet each other. They looked at each other for a while before Yo-Ram finally decided to order what Su Yan was eating. Back to the present time, someone accidentally pushed Yo Rum's body away that she fell on Su Yan. Su Yan quickly removed Yo Rum's hand from his body. He then apologized to her and left that place. After that, he came to see Siu Kun. Siu Kun told him that Mu Jiao would investigate the prosthetic that he used because Wu talked about it during the meeting and he Sun finally ordered him to investigate it. Mu Jiao approached Jung Hu and asked him if he had seen someone who did what Su Yan did, such as capturing a teenager who threatened to bomb the airplane. Jung Hoom refused to tell him anything because he was afraid that Siu Kun would get angry at him. Mu Jia said that he was ordered by the director of Terminal 2, He Sun, to investigate Su Yan. And Mu asked Yo Rum to take the documents that were labeled with orange stickers on his desk to the team manager of commercial facilities. While Yo Rum was taking those documents, she saw Su Yan's personal background. She found out that Su Yan had first degree physical disability and that he used prosthetic because of it. Mujo was watching the CCTV footage of Su Yan saving Yo Rum in the tax free area another day. After he watched that CCTV footage, he wondered about what kind of human Su Yan was. Su Yan asked Wu to talk to him in private. He asked him about the reason why he ordered Mujo to investigate him. And Wu told him that he wanted to get rid of him because he disturbed him. He said that he was annoyed because he kept following him. He had told him to stop following him, but he didn't listen to him and kept following him that he finally had that accident. The next scene revealed about the time when Wu and Su Yan were having a dinner together at Fox Bride Star back then. After they finished eating at that restaurant, Wu asked Su Yan to stop following him because their parents got divorced and they were not siblings anymore. After saying that, Wu left Su Yan in that place. While Wu was leaving, he remembered that he forgot his flash drive. But suddenly, some mysterious men showed up in that place and stopped him. Yu Rum's father gave Wu's flash drive to Su Yan. Su Yan looked for In Wu after he received that flash drive. In Wu was being beaten up by those mysterious men. Su Yan saw those mysterious men taking In Wu to their car and chased them. Unfortunately, while he was chasing them, he had an accident. He was severely injured and paralyzed because of that accident. Those mysterious men got out of their car and checked on Su Yan. While they were doing that, In Wu quietly ran away and left the severely injured Su Yan in that place. Those mysterious men saw him and chased him right away. Back to the present time, Su Yan got angry when he remembered about that accident. He was mad at Wu for leaving him when he was severely injured back then and not even regretting what he did. He attacked Wu and pushed his body against the wall. After a while, he finally let him go and left that place. After work, Su Yan saw Yo Rum sitting with her suitcase. It appeared that Yo Rum had left her apartment, but unfortunately, she could only begin to stay at employee unit the next day. Yo Rum said that she planned to spend the night at the nearby sauna. Su Yan told her that she could spend the night at his place. When they arrived at Su Yan's house, Yo Rum told Su Yan not to misinterpret this situation. She said that it would take a long time for her to begin to like someone. Su Yan said that he understood everything clearly. He understood that they couldn't date right now even though he knew that Yo Rum didn't reject him. After that, Su Yan prepared dinner for them. Yo Rum was getting even more amazed by him. She thought that not only that Su Yan was brilliant, but he was also great at cooking. In another place, Su Kun asked Wu about what happened between him and Su Yan. She remembered that they used to be siblings, and that Su Yan used to like Wu more than he liked anyone in this world. Wu finally told her that each time Su Yan spent time with him, everything suddenly became a disaster. He thought that Su Yan wouldn't have had that accident if he didn't spend time with him 12 years ago. The next day, Yeonju was moving to the employee unit. Her boarding house was located right across Su Yan's boarding house. Yo Rum woke up from her sleep and saw the note that was left by Su Yan on the desk. In that note, Su Yan said that he needed to go to work early. He also asked Yo Rum to have a breakfast first before she went to work. At cafeteria, Su Yan came to see Mu Jia. Mu Jia asked him to go to work early because he wanted to talk about the prosthetic that he used. He said that he wanted to check and investigate that prosthetic. He said that there would be a consequence for Su Yan if he didn't allow him to investigate the prosthetic that he used. He said that he would give him a week to think about it whether he would allow him to investigate that prosthetic or not. While Yo Rum was leaving Su Yan's boarding house, she ran into Yeon Ju. Yo Rum told Yeon Ju that she spent the night at her friend's house. When she arrived at her office, she tried to find Su Yan, but she didn't see him on his desk. 
She then called Su Yan and asked him to go to the storeroom to talk to her. In the storeroom, Yo Rum told Su Yan that she ran into Young Ju in front of his boarding house. She worried that Young Ju would find out that she spent the night at Su Yan's house last night. She was afraid that Young Ju would start the rumor about her and Su Yan even though they were not dating. She worried that they would mock her because they had found a worker who was more competent than her. Su Yan asked her if what other people thought about them was really important. Yo Rum worried if people would think bad of her because she would get hurt from it. Su Yan suddenly remembered about the time when he was still using a wheelchair. Everybody couldn't stop staring at him and pitying him. He felt uncomfortable because of the way they looked at him. Back to the present time, Yo Rum asked Su Yan to be careful so that Young Ju wouldn't find out that he lived in a boarding house that was located across her boarding house. Su Yan promised that he would find a way to deal with Young Ju. After that, he asked Yo Rum if she had a breakfast and if she slept well last night. Suddenly, Su Yan heard someone drop a duct tape in that place. He tried to find the person who dropped that duct tape, but he didn't see anyone there. During the break time, Yeon Su called Yo Rum and asked her to have a lunch with him. While he was waiting for Yo Rum at cafeteria, he heard other workers there gossiped about Yo Rum and Su Yan. Those workers said that Yo Rum and Su Yan were already dating and sleeping together. They wondered why a brilliant person like Su Yan could like a reckless and clumsy woman like Yo Rum. Eun Su approached them and asked them who told them about that rumor. Not long after that, he saw Yo Rum and asked her to have a lunch in another place instead. Sun Kiel was surprised when he heard about the rumor of Su Yan and Yo Rum dating. He then looked for Siu Kum and told her about it. Yo Rum gave a bottle of coffee to Su Yan. She thanked him for preparing a breakfast for her that morning. Sun Kiel saw them and teased them by saying that they looked really good together. He said that he already knew that Yo Rum stayed at Su Yan's place last night. Yo Rum was surprised when she heard that. She quickly looked for Young Ju because she thought that she was the one who spread that rumor. Young Ju admitted that she didn't know if it was Su Yan's boarding house and that she had no idea about the rumor that she was talking about. Suddenly, Su Yan asked Yo Rum to talk to him in private. He told her that while they were having a conversation in the storeroom earlier, there was a person who listened to their conversation secretly. He apologized to her for not telling her about it sooner. Sung Kiel was angry at Su Yan. He said that it was because of Su Yan's presentation in front of Wu that their team failed to get a rest area. He couldn't believe that they lost to the commercial facilities team. He said that the only thing that Su Yan could win in this life was his love life. He also blamed Yo Rum for their defeat. He thought that Yo Rum didn't know how to work, always made mistakes, and distracted Su Yan's attention by flirting with him. Su Yan admitted that he didn't focus on his work, but he asked Sung Kiel not to blame other people for it. Sung Kiel was getting even more angry when he heard what Su Yan said. Su Kun was annoyed when she saw that. She asked Sung Kiel to stop blaming and berating other people. Su Yan said that Yo Rum didn't do anything to him. He admitted that he liked Yo Rum, but Yo Rum didn't like him back. Su Yan then tried to call Yo Rum, but Yo Rum didn't answer his call. Mujer saw Su Yan looking for Yo Rum and breaking the door of the storeroom. In the evening, Eun Su called Jung Hoon. He asked him to apologize to Su Yan and Yo Rum for spreading a false rumor about them and their relationship. He threatened that if he refused to do what he asked him, he would tell everybody about who started that rumor. Su Yan saw Yo Rum waiting for him in front of his boarding house. She came to that place to take her suitcases back. After she had her suitcases back, Su Yan offered her a help. He said that he would help her to find her boarding house. Turned out, Yo Rum lived in the same boarding house as Yeon Ju. She refused to enter her boarding house after she found out about it. She said that she would rather live in another place because she was embarrassed. Su Yan asked her if she was embarrassed because of himself or because he liked her. Yo Rum said that she was ashamed of herself. Su Yan told her that there was no such thing as a coincidence. He believed that everything happened for a reason. For that reason, that day would be a meaningful day for him. Yo Rum asked him about how he could find out about that quote. She asked him if he knew her father and Su Yan said yes. It was revealed that Su Yan tried to take his own life back then because he was paralyzed. But when he was about to commit suicide, Yo Rum's father suddenly showed up and stopped him from doing it. Su Yan told Yo Rum that he often visited Fox Bride's Star Cafe, the restaurant that was formerly owned by Yo Rum's father. He also knew that Yo Rum's father had written some unpopular children's books. Yo Rum asked him why he didn't tell her about it sooner. Su Yan worried that Yo Rum would get sad if she heard about her father. He knew that Yo Rum's parents got divorced and that Yo Rum had never seen her father since she was a child. Yo Rum showed Su Yan the compass that her father gave her. She always took that compass with her everywhere. She remembered that her father gave her that compass because she always got lost. She asked Su Yan to tell her more about her father. Su Yan promised that he would tell her about her father later, but he wanted her to return to her boarding house now. 
Yo Rum finally decided to ring the doorbell of her boarding house. When Yunju opened the door, Yo Rum told her that she was her new roommate. After that, she went straight to her room. Suddenly, she received a call from Su Yan. She told Su Yan that she had arrived in her room. She also thanked him for telling her about her father. The next morning, when Yo Rum checked the refrigerator, Yamju told her that she was not allowed to touch her food and beverage. Yamju said that just because they were roommates, it didn't mean that they were friends. For that reason, she asked her not to ask her any personal questions. While Su Yan and Yo Rum were heading to their workplace, Yo Rum told Su Yan about what happened at her boarding house. Suddenly, Yum Su showed up in front of them. He introduced himself to Su Yan as Yo Rum's best friend. At office, Su Kun ordered Su Yan and Yo Rum to go to departure gate because there were many passengers whose flights got delayed. There were a foreigner who refused to go through airport security and a man who made a complaint because he was not allowed to bring his drink to the airplane. That man went berserk and spilled his drink on a worker. Dae Ki came to see Mu Jia and told him about the foreigner who refused to go through airport security. He thought that there was something wrong about that foreigner's chest. That foreigner argued that he was wearing a bandage. Dae Ki asked other passengers to wait in another line. Yun Ju remembered that that foreigner was holding a Japanese passport before, but now he was holding an Australian passport. Turned out, that foreigner was the broker who tried to smuggle gold bars into Japan another day. Mu Jia approached that foreigner and asked him about the illness he suffered from. That foreigner said that his ribs got broken because he had a car accident. Mu Jia asked his team to call the customs officers and the police. After that, he asked that foreigner to follow him. That foreigner's partner, a suspicious man, called their other partners and told them that the foreigner who brought their drug had been captured. Dae Ki approached him and asked him to follow him too. While that suspicious man was following Dae Ki, he saw his partners and gave them a signal. After those men saw him, they tried to distract the attention of the security service team by dropping the suitcases of other passengers. As soon as Dae Ki and Yeonju got distracted, the foreigner and his partner ran off. Su Yan saw Yo Rum almost falling down but he saved her right away. The foreigner who tried to run away from that place tripped over his leg and fell down. Because of that, Dae Ki and Yeonju managed to capture him. After that, they chased that foreigner's partner to the parking space. Unfortunately, they failed to capture him. That man and his partners managed to run away from them. Yo Rum contacted Sung Chiol and informed him that there was a worker who had a fight with a passenger. Su Yan approached them and broke up their fight. That passenger asked his wife if she had recorded everything. Yo Rum noticed that another passenger was recording their fight too. That passenger threatened that he would embarrass their airport by uploading that video on social media and that he would sue the airport for ruining his mood. In the customs office, the workers removed the bandage that that foreigner was wearing and found out that he was hiding drug. And Wu asked the worker who had a fight with the passenger earlier to apologize to that passenger and his wife. But that worker refused to do that. He said that he was only following the rule in that place, which was prohibiting passengers to take food and drink to the airplane. And Wu was mad when he heard what that worker said. He threatened that he would fire him. That worker's superior finally decided to kneel down and apologize to that passenger. Not long after that, Mujia came to that place. He asked that worker superior to stand up. He told that passenger and his wife that they had violated the rule in that place and the aviation security law, which prohibited passengers to take food and drink to the airplane, because bond could be made of liquid. That passenger said that that worker was the one who attacked him first by grabbing him by collar. Yo Rum showed them the video of that passenger and that worker fighting that was taken by another passenger. In that video, that passenger was the one who spilled water on that passenger, slapped his face, and grabbing him by collar first. That passenger was embarrassed after he watched that video. He finally decided to forget his threat and continue his flight. After that, Muja warned in Wu not to interfere with the business within his department anymore. He said that he wouldn't stay silent if he found out that his team humiliated themselves again by kneeling down before the passengers. In the evening, the members of the security service team came to Yeonju's boarding house to throw a housewarming party for Yeonju. Yo Rum decided to wait outside until they finished having that housewarming party. Su Yan heard a noise outside. He saw Yo Rum sitting alone out there and approached her. Yo Rum told him that the security service team and Yeonju were having a housewarming party at her boarding house right now. While Muje was heading to Yeonju's boarding house, some men saw him and followed him. Those men were the criminals who tried to smuggle drug at Inchon International Airport earlier. Stu Yan asked Yo Rum to walk around with him. Yo Rum asked him if her father's cooking was delicious. Stu Yan said that the noodle that her father made for him that day was the most delicious noodle that he had ever had. He slowly reached her hand. But when Stu Yan and Yo Rum were about to kiss, they heard someone got beaten up. Stu Yan asked Yo Rum to call the police and leave that place. After saying that, he kissed her and left her. 
After a while, he managed to defeat all those men. Turned out, the person whom those men beat up was Mu Jia. But suddenly, another man showed up behind Su Yan and electrocuted him. Su Yan collapsed because of that. Not only that, there was also smoke that emitted from his prosthetic hand and leg. Not long after that, Yo Rum and some police officers arrived in that place. They looked for Su Yan there, but they didn't see him anywhere. Mu Jia called Dae Ki and told him that he couldn't join them at Yeonju's boarding house. The police officers found the perpetrator and took him with them. Yo Rum tried to call Su Yan, but nobody answered her call. She then visited Su Yan's boarding house to look for him, but she didn't find him there. Turned out Su Yan was taken to Fox Bride Star Cafe by Mu Jia. The worried Siu Kun asked Mu Jia about Su Yan's condition. Mu Jia said that Mr. Jang took Su Yan with him. He also asked her about what Su Yan's prosthetic hand and leg made from. Siu Kun said that she would tell him about everything, but she needed him to promise that he would keep this information secret. Mujo said that he couldn't do that because he was tasked to investigate Subiem's prosthetic hand and leg and report the result of his investigation to his son. He said that Su Yan was using a prosthetic whose safety couldn't be confirmed yet. He noticed that that prosthetic allowed Su Yan to do things that were impossible for normal people to do, and nobody could guarantee that that prosthetic was not harmful. Stu Kun told him that she would risk everything to take responsibility for what Su Yan did. She swore that she saw with her own eyes how Su Yan used that prosthetic for the first time that he could finally walk on his feet and live like a normal person again. She made it clear to Mu Jia that all Su Yan wanted in this world was to become normal, not special. And that was why he decided to use that prosthetic. She begged Mu Jia not to tell Su Yan's secret to anyone. In another place, Su Yan was receiving treatment for his wound. The next day, Su Kuvan told her team that Su Yan didn't come to work that day because he was not feeling well. After saying that, he asked them to do their job well. Yo Rum tried to call Su Yan, but nobody answered her call. She then sent him a text message asking how he had been. Mr. Jang decided to turn off Su Yan's phone so that he could get some rest. And Move asked Yo Rum about the reason why Su Yan didn't come to work that day. Yo Rum told him that Su Yan was not feeling well. She asked him why he suddenly asked her about Su Yan. And Move finally told her that he used to become Su Yan's brother. He said that his father and Su Yan's mother were married for three years. But after their parents got divorced, they became estranged. Because of misunderstanding between them, they had never spoken to each other again. Despite everything that happened between them, and Wu actually still worried about Su Yan. Su Yan finally regained his consciousness. When he woke up, Mr. Jang approached him and told him that a doctor visited him and treated his wound earlier. He told Su Yan to get some rest because he was seriously injured. He even suggested him to quit his job because of his injury. He also said that he couldn't use his prosthetic for a while. As the substitute, Su Yan could use a wheelchair until he recovered. Not long after that, Su Kun arrived in that place to visit Su Yan. She asked him to quit his job because Mu Jia would continue to investigate him and report him to his son. She was afraid that he would get hurt again if people found out about his secret. She knew that people would pity him and think that he was weird again, just like when he used a wheelchair for the first time back then. After Su Kun left that place, Su Yan checked his phone and found out that there were many text messages and missed calls from Yo Rum. After thinking for a while, he finally decided to use his prosthetic and go to airport. He used Mr. Jang's car secretly to go to airport. Mr. Jang called Siu Kun and told her that Su Yan went to airport even though his health condition didn't allow him to do so. He asked Siu Kun to help him to find Su Yan. Siu Kun asked Yo Rum if she was going to meet with Su Yan. Yo Rum said that she was unable to contact Su Yan. Siu Kun asked her to help her to search that airport to find Su Yan. Turned out Su Yan was in the storeroom with Mu Jia. There was no security camera in that place. Sudian showed his prosthetic hand to Mu Jia and told him that it was connected to his right shoulder. He said that he used the same prosthetic for his leg. Without that prosthetic, he wouldn't be able to walk or move his hand. Mu Jia asked him about what else that he could do with that prosthetic. He wondered if his prosthetic had ever malfunctioned before. Sudian admitted that he didn't know what else that he could do with that prosthetic, but he once stopped a car from moving with it. He also remembered that his prosthetic had never malfunctioned before. Mu Jia asked him why he suddenly told him about all this. Su Yan asked him to allow them to live a normal life for a month. He promised that he would quit his job after that. Not long after that, Mr. Jang arrived at that airport. Meanwhile, Yo Rum and Siu Kun were still looking for Su Yan. After searching that place for a while, Yo Rum finally found Su Yan. She called Siu Kun and told her about it. Mu Jia saw Siu Kun and told her that he had just talked to Su Yan. He asked her about the reason why she tried hard to keep Su Yan's secret. Su Kun admitted that Su Yan reminded her of her younger brother Ji Hoon. Her brother had a similar problem with Su Yan, which made him unable to live a normal life without being discriminated or pitied. 
Because of that, Su Kun empathized with Su Yan and wanted him to live a normal life. Yo Rum approached Su Yan and asked him if he was alright. It seemed that she really worried about him. Su Yan asked her what would happen if they loved each other now. After that, Yo Rum and Su Yan kissed. Mu Jia came to see his son and informed him that there was a problem with the prosthetic that Su Yan used. And Wu asked Mu Jia to show them the document that stated that that prosthetic was safe to use. Mu Jia said that he had crossed the line. And Wu asked him if he could see the report of the investigation that he was going to give to his son. His son broke up their fight and asked them to leave his room. Su Yan apologized to Mr. Jang for using his car without his permission. Su Kun told him that she worried about him, but she felt relieved now because he seemed better. Mr. Jang gave him a handkerchief and told him to use it to remove the lipstick stain from his mouth. At home, Su Yan told Mr. Jang that he and Yo Run were going to go on a date that night. Mr. Jang thought that it was a bad idea, he asked Su Yan to stay at home and remove his prosthetic instead. But Su Yan didn't listen to him, he still decided to go out with Yo Rum and asked Mr. Jang to allow him to use his car. Yun Su saw Su Yan leaving his boarding house. He came to that place to give some flowers and cakes to Yo Rum since she had just moved into a new house. Suddenly, Su Yan accidentally dropped the car key that he was holding. But not long after that, that car key was attached to his hand. His hand was also attached to the car door that the glass got damaged. It seemed that his hand malfunctioned again. Suddenly, Su Yan heard someone approach that place. He immediately hid when he heard that noise. Turned out that person was Eun Su. He saw Su Yan getting injured in that place. He then helped Su Yan and took him home. Before he left that place, he noticed that there was a wheelchair in Su Yan's room. Yo Run received a text message from Su Yan. In that text message, Su Yan apologized to her for canceling their plan that night. Mr. Jang told Su Yan that he couldn't use his prosthetic for a while. He said that he needed to find out if there was a problem with the machine or the microchip that was planted inside Su Yan's body. He might take one month or even one year to analyze the problem within that prosthetic. Su Yan told him that he only had one month left to work at Incheon International Airport and that Mu Jia had agreed with his plan. He said that he would do his best so that people would remember him as a perfect employee. The next morning before Su Yan went to work, Mr. Jang gave him a remote control that could be used to turn off and turn on his prosthetic anytime he pleased. He told him to put that remote control near his shoulder if his prosthetic ever malfunctioned again. He said that if Su Yan did that, then the power would be turned off and the magnetism would disappear, but he would lose his power to move his hand and leg. After that, Mr. Jang called Siu Kun and told her that Su Yan forced himself to go to work even though his health condition was not good yet. At ancient international airport, Young Ju and Dae Ki chased a thief. While they were chasing that thief, Dae Ki accidentally dropped his walkie-talkie. A homeless man saw that walkie-talkie and took it secretly. Dae Ki finally realized that he didn't have his walkie-talkie with him. He looked for it, but he didn't find it anywhere. Young Ju tried to contact Dae Ki's walkie-talkie, but that homeless man was the one who answered her. She told Dae Ki that his walkie-talkie was still at that airport. Subian arrived at airport and searched the west area. Turned out, Yo Rum was also searching that area. Su Yan approached her and greeted her. Yo Rum asked him if his condition was better now. After that, Su Yan and Yo Rum searched that area together. Meanwhile, Dae Ki was still trying to contact the homeless man who took his walkie-talkie. That homeless man played a joke on him by telling him to repeatedly sit down and stand up if he wanted his walkie-talkie back. Young Ju saw that homeless man watching them from a distance. She ran toward him to capture him. But when she arrived there, that homeless man had already ran away. After that, Yun Soob asked Su Yan to talk to him in private. Su Yan thanked him for helping him another day. Yun Soob asked him how he could damage that car. He also mentioned the wheelchair that he saw in Su Yan's room that day. He said that Su Yan didn't have to tell him everything, but he hoped that he would tell Yo Rum about it. He thought that it was better for Yo Rum to hear it from him directly instead of hearing it from other people. He said that he would give him one week to tell Yo Rum everything. And Wu asked Yo Rum if she could help him to solve the misunderstanding that happened between him and Su Yan. Yo Rum said that she couldn't help him to do it. Suddenly, Su Yan showed up in that place and asked Yo Rum about the help that In Wu asked her. Yo Rum told him that In Wu wanted to reconcile with him because they were brothers after all. Su Yan was mad when he heard that he couldn't believe that In Wu told Yo Rum about what happened between them. In Wu defended himself by saying that he didn't know that Yo Rum didn't know about his past how that accident happened and what happened to him 12 years ago. Right now, Su Yim seemed like a normal person, but it was stated on his personal background that he had first-degree physical disability and that he used a prosthetic like the one that Yo Rum had seen before. And Wu wanted to know how Su Yan could possess such superpower. Suddenly, Su Yan's hand malfunctioned again. 
All metals in that room were suddenly attracted to his hand. Suyun left that place because he began to feel uncomfortable. He kept covering his arm with his jacket while he was heading to the storeroom. Yo Rum used her walkie-talkie to contact him, but Suyun didn't answer her call. At Fox Bride Star Cafe, Suyun told Mr. Jang that he had found out about the reason why his prosthetic often malfunctioned. He realized that it was because of Yo Rum. He remembered that he malfunctioned for the first time when Yo Rum's compass was attracted to his prosthetic hand back then. When her feelings for Yo Rum were getting stronger, odd things that he couldn't control began to happen. Stu Yan told Mr. Jang that he wanted to be with Yo Rum for the next entire month no matter what happened before his prosthetic began to get repaired. Suddenly, he received a call from Yo Rum. Yo Rum asked him if he was alright. She said that Su Yan didn't have to give her any explanations about the incident that happened at their office earlier if he didn't want to. At office, and Wu told Mu Jia that all metals were attracted to Su Yan's hand earlier. He assumed that Subian's prosthetic hand was using a very powerful magnet. He was afraid that it would be harmful to use at Terminal 2 that was equipped with advanced technology. The next day, Subian and Yo Rum were checking Terminal 2 together. Yo Rum asked Subian when they would go on a date. Subian tried to control his feelings. He took a step back from Yo Rum and said that they would talk about it later. In front of the elevator, Yo Rum tried to get closer to Subian, but Subian avoided her. In the elevator, Yo Rum's hand accidentally touched Su Yan's hand. Yo Rum finally decided to hold Su Yan's hand. When Yo Rum was about to leave the elevator, Su Yan asked her to go to rooftop with him because he wanted to tell her everything. When they arrived there, Su Yan asked Yo Rum if she thought that he was weird and scary after she saw the incident that took place another day. He also told her that he had first-degree physical disability which made him different from normal people. Yo Rum said that everybody in this world was different. They were born differently and lived in different ways. She said that she wanted to be special, but Su Yan wanted to be a normal person. They both knew that they were different, so there was nothing that Su Yan needed to worry about. Su Yan finally told Yo Rum that he had been malfunctioning recently because of her. The more he loved her, the more his heart beat and got damaged. For that reason, he asked her to give him time. Later, Yo Rum told the homeless man that the man she liked was getting more damaged because of her. Turned out that a homeless man lived at that airport. Yo Rum often saw him and talked to him. She noticed that he was holding a walkie-talkie that belonged to that airport. That homeless man admitted that that walkie-talkie belonged to Dae Ki. Seo Kun told Su Yan that Mu Jo would restrict his work because In Wu saw metals getting attracted to his hand. Su Yan said that he had found out about the reason why his prosthetic malfunctioned and that he was trying to find the solution to that problem. Suddenly, In Wu showed up in that place. He said that Su Yan's prosthetic had been causing problems. He told Su Yan that the incident that happened another day was not allowed to happen again. Su Yan asked Inwu to talk to him in private because it was his own problem. While a homeless man was waiting for Yo Rum who looked for Dae Ki in his room, he saw Inwu and Su Yan having a conversation. Inwu told Su Yan to quit his job. He asked him if he didn't want to quit his job because he wanted to take revenge on him by using the prosthetic that possessed a supernatural power. He said that he had a better life before Su Yan showed up in his life. He admitted that he had forgotten about Su Yan and that accident. He asked Su Yan to quit his job before he got hurt again. While Inwu was returning to his room, he ran into the homeless man. He asked Yo Rum about who that homeless man was. Yo Rum said that that homeless man found the item that belonged to the security service team. When Su Yan saw that homeless man, he called him by his name. Turned out that homeless man was Inwu's father. Since Inwu's father married his mother, that man became his father for three years. After that, Su Yan and Inwu's father had a conversation. Inwu's father was glad because Su Yan grew up well. He asked him about his health condition. Yo Rum gave Dae Ki's walkie-talkie to Yeon Ju. Yeon Ju thanked her and then returned that walkie-talkie to Dae Ki. In the evening, Yo Rum asked Su Yeon to have a dinner together with her, but Su Yeon rejected her invitation. Suddenly, Yeon Su showed up in that place. He asked Yo Rum to go to the restaurant where she had booked a reservation. In front of the elevator, Yeon Su told Yo Rum that he was trying to help her. He was confident that Su Yeon would follow them soon. He then counted to three, but Su Yan didn't show up in that place. When Su Yan arrived there, Yeon Su and Yo Rum had already left that place. At restaurant, Yo Rum wondered about the reason why Su Yan asked her to give her time after he confessed his feelings for her. Un Su asked her what made her like Su Yan more than she liked him. Yo Rum admitted that she felt happy each time she heard Su Yan's voice and that she felt special each time Su Yan stared at her. Yeon Su suggested Yo Rum to tell Su Yan about what she was feeling about him. When Yo Rum heard that, she realized that she hadn't confessed her feelings for Su Yan. She then left that restaurant and looked for Su Yan. 
She finally found Suyeon and told him that she liked him. She also hoped that he would stop getting damaged because of her even though she didn't understand what it actually meant. Before leaving, she told Suyeon that she would keep waiting for him. Suyeon chased her and hugged her right away. The next day, Suyeon finally asked Yo Rum to go on a date with him. After work, Yo Rum saw a man being violent to his girlfriend because his girlfriend didn't want him to break up with her. Yo Rum tried to stop that man from attacking his girlfriend but she got injured instead. Not long after that, Dae Ki arrived in that place and took care of that man. Meanwhile, Yeonju called Suyeon and told him that Yo Rum got hurt. While Suyeon was receiving that call, he accidentally dropped his phone. He tried to pick it up but he fell from his wheelchair instead. Actually, he planned to show himself using a wheelchair to Yo Rum. But now he became sad because he fell from his wheelchair. He tried to get into his wheelchair so that he could go to airport soon, but he was struggling to do it. At airport, the violent man managed to run away from the security service team and leave that place by using a bus. Meanwhile, Yo Rum was finally receiving first aid for her wound. Su Kun called Muja and told him that Yo Rum got 12 stitches on her left hand. She said that Yo Rum was all right even though she seemed frightened. She asked Muja if they had captured the violent man who ran away from the airport. After Siu Kun finished talking to Muja on phone, she approached Subian who was in disguise. She asked him about what had happened, but Subian didn't answer her. Instead, he asked her about the person who had hurt Yo Rum. Siu Kun said that it was the boyfriend of the employee who worked at the front desk. She also told Subian about how that incident happened. She added that the police were looking for that violent man now. After that, Subian used his prosthetic and asked that employee about where her boyfriend was. Once he found that violent man, he began to brutally beat him up. After that, he called the security service team by using the telephone booth at that airport. He told them about where that violent man was. After Dae Ki and the security service team received that report, they found that violent man being tied up in the restroom. At hospital, Dae Ki told Mu Jia about everything that had happened. Not long after that, that violent man's boss, Major Joe, arrived in that place. Turned out, Major Joe and his men were the people who brutally beat and woo up and left the severely injured Su Yan on street back then. Muja showed Su Kun the CCTV footage of a mysterious man taking that violent man to the restroom. He suspected that the man who had beaten that violent man up was Su Yan. Su Kun said that she didn't recognize that mysterious man because he was wearing a mask and a hoodie. She also asked Muja not to accuse anyone without proof. At Fox Bride Star Cafe, Su Kun told Mr. Jang that Su Yeon had attacked a man and that she had a CCTV footage to prove it. She also told him about what happened to Yo Rum. She said that she had tried to call Su Yeon, but Su Yeon didn't answer her call. As soon as Su Yeon arrived home, he washed his wounded hand. Not long after that, Mr. Jang arrived in that place. He asked Su Yeon if he had beaten someone up and Su Yeon said yes. Su Yeon defended himself by saying that what he was doing was just to punish a bad man who had hurt the woman he loved. Mr. Jang reminded him that the superpower he possessed right now didn't belong to him and that he was not allowed to use it to hurt other people. He said that he made that prosthetic to help Suyeon to live a normal life again. After that, Suyeon visited Yul Rum's boarding house. When he arrived there, he saw Eun Soob opening the door and leaving that place. In her room, Yul Rum apologized to Suyeon for making him wait for her for too long. She told him that she was alright. After saying that, she fell asleep. Yo Rum's mother, Hai Won, asked Su Yeon if he was the one who helped her on the airplane back then, and Su Yeon said yes. Hai Won then helped Su Yeon to treat his wounded hand. While she was treating his wound, she asked him about what relationship that he and her daughter had. Su Yeon confessed that he really liked her daughter. Hai Won asked him if he was the one who couldn't feel any pain because of an accident. Su Yeon told her that he had that accident when he was still in high school. But because of the help of Hun Jae Young, Yo Rum's father, he could continue to live until this day. He remembered that on the day he had that accident, he cried in front of Jae Young because his brother left him alone. The next day, Yo Rum woke up from her sleep. She saw her mother cooking in the kitchen and hugged her. Hai Won asked her to wash her hands and set the dining table because the guests were already hungry. Yo Rum was surprised when she saw Yun Su and Su Yeon there. She got embarrassed and returned to her room to prepare herself immediately. While Yo Rum and the others were having a breakfast together, she received a text message from Mu Jia. In that text message, Muja asked her to go to police station to give her testimony. At police station, Muja told Dae Ki and Young Ju that that violent man denied everything he did at Incheon Airport International another day. Dae Ki and Young Ju said that they were ready to give their testimonies to the police. That violent smile when he saw Dae Ki and Yo Rum, but he got scared when he saw Su Yeon. Before a police officer took him with him, that violent man saw Su Yeon's ID card. After Yo Rum and the others finished getting interrogated, Yo Rum asked them to have a lunch together. 
After that, they ate ice creams and rode a bike together. When Yo Rum looked at Su Yun, she suddenly remembered about what Siu Kun told her that morning. That morning, Siu Kun called Yo Rum and told her that Su Yun was the one who attacked the man who hurt her. While Yo Rum and Su Yun were heading home, Yo Rum asked Su Yun about what he was going to do that night. Su Yun answered her question by kissing her for several times. After that, he asked her to go to his house because there was something that he wanted to show her. In his room, Su Yun removed his clothes and asked Yo Rum to look at him. Yo Rum was surprised and awkward, but she tried her best to act normal. She asked Su Yun if he talked about his hand when he said that he was getting damaged, and Su Yun said yes. Su Yun said that when he was feeling emotions because of her, he began to malfunction. There were conductors in his prosthetic hand and leg. To stimulate those conductors, there was some sort of battery that was planted inside his body and it worked as a pacemaker that was sensitive to the change of his heart rhythm. Yo Rum thanked Su Yun for telling her about it. After that, she told him that she needed to go home. Suddenly, Su Yun had a nosebleed. At Fox Bride Star Cafe, Mujia asked Mr. Jang if he was the doctor who made the prosthetic that Su Yun used. He said that he wanted to know if that prosthetic could give serious harm or not. Mr. Jang admitted that that prosthetic was harmful to be used by Su Yun right now. He worried that Su Yun wouldn't survive if he continued to use that prosthetic for one month. The next day, Su Yun saw In Wu's father looking sick. He asked In Wu if he would keep ignoring his father who had been sleeping at that airport and was looking sick right now. In Wu told him to ignore that homeless man and just focus on the crime that he had committed. While Su Yun was checking the airport, he saw In Wu and Manger Zhou having a conversation. He remembered that Manger Zhou and his men attacked In Wu and left him on street when he was severely injured back then. Manger Zhou told In Wu to talk to He Sung, the director of Terminal 2. In Wu gave Manger Zhou a document and asked him to give it to his boss who was going to have a meeting with His Sung that evening. Manger Zhou asked him how Su Yan could recover completely that he could beat his subordinate up. In Wu didn't answer his question and left that place. Su Yan approached him and asked him why he was with those people. He asked him if he was going to leave him again this time. In Wu asked him to leave that place. He said that he wouldn't help him if something bad happened to him. Su Yan looked at Manger Zhou and saw him smiling at him. After that, Yo Rum asked Su Dian to talk to her in private. She apologized to him for leaving his house suddenly last night. She said that she did that because she didn't know about what to do. After saying that, she told Su Yan that she loved him. Su Dian was happy when he heard that. He gently took Yo Rum into his arms. At Fox Bride Star Cafe, Mr. Jang saw the result of the blood test that had been done by Su Yan. He called Su Dian and told him that according to the result of his recent blood test, he was having acute inflammation. He said that the doctor who had been taking care of him wanted to examine him soon. Su Yan told him that he was all right and that there was nothing wrong with his body. Mr. Jang tried to persuade him to quit his job, but Su Yan didn't listen to him. In the evening, in Wu took his son to meet with Manger Zhou's boss. Manger Zhou's boss was a successful businessman who wanted to buy stock from Incheon International Airport. Meanwhile, Su Yan and his co-workers were hanging out together. After they had a drink, they went to a karaoke lounge. While they were spending time at that karaoke lounge, Su Yan suddenly had a nosebleed. He quickly went to the restroom and saw a red mark on his neck. While Su Yan and Yo Rum were walking home, Yo Rum asked Su Yan to spend their Christmas by going on holiday together. Su Yan didn't know what to say when he heard that because he remembered that he only had one month to live. Before Su Yan and Yo Rum disappeared into their own house, they hugged each other. At home, Su Yan found out that his right arm was covered in bruises and that he was having a fever. Mr. Jang went to Yo Rum's boarding house. He introduced himself to Yo Rum as Su Yan's guardian. He told Yo Rum that after Su Yan had that accident 12 years ago, he was using a wheelchair for 11 years. It wasn't until one year ago that Su Yan began to live like a normal person again. Unfortunately, his health condition was not good right now because he had an infection. For that reason, Mr. Jang asked Yo Rum to ask Su Yan to stop using his prosthetic. Yo Rum asked him for how long Su Yan was not allowed to use his prosthetic. Mr. Jang admitted that he didn't know about the answer yet. It could be for one month, one year, or even longer than that. He said that Su Yan would need to use a wheelchair for a while because it was the only way for him to survive. The next day, a thick fog covered the area of Incheon International Airport. Because of that thick fog, all flights at that airport were canceled. Su Kun ordered her team to contact the employees of those airlines and ask them to go to the waiting room to help the passengers whose flights were delayed. She also asked Yo Rum and Su Yan to go to the nearby supermarket and buy as many foods and beverages as they could. When Yo Rum and Su Yan were about to leave that airport, Yo Rum noticed that Su Yan didn't look well. She touched his forehead and found out that he was having a fever. She asked him to go to Dr. Soon, but Su Yan told her that there was nothing to worry about him. At supermarket, Su Yan tried to move the boxes of instant noodles on the trolley. 
But Yo Rum stopped him from doing those things. Yo Rum even put those boxes of instant noodles into their car by herself. At airport, Imu's father was found lying unconscious on the floor. Yumju checked that man and recognized him as the homeless man who stole Dei Ki's walkie talkie another day. In the waiting room, the workers at Incheon International Airport gave free food to all passengers who were waiting for their flights. Yo Rum saw Su Yen giving free food to those passengers. She immediately stopped him from doing it because she didn't want him to overwork. After she finished doing her job, she went to another room and checked her wounded leg. Su Yen approached her and helped her treat her wounded leg. He asked her why she was acting strangely that day. Su Yen said that she just worried about him because he didn't look well. Suddenly, she received a call from Yeonju. Yeonju told her that Inwoo's father was sick. After Yo Rum heard that, she told Su Yan about it. Muja told Inwoo that he heard that he and he sung went out together last night. Inwoo was annoyed when he heard that. He thought that Muja was spying on him. He said that all he and he sung did last night was just having a drink together. After that, Inwoo called Manger Joe. He asked him how Muja could know about the meeting that he sung and his boss had last night. He told Manger Joe to prevent Muja from spying on them and finding out about their plan. Major Joe was mad because In Wu ordered him as if he was his boss now. In Wu told him that he needed to obey his order until they successfully made a deal with his son. After that, Su Yan told In Wu that his father was losing his consciousness due to pneumonia and malnutrition, and that he was receiving treatment at Incheon Medical Center right now. Before leaving that place, Su Yan gave In Wu the address of Incheon Medical Center. He asked him to visit his father. After Yo Rum finished her work that day, Yo Rum asked Su Yan to go home together. But Su Yan told her that he still needed to finish his work first. Yo Rum told him to go home first and that she would help him to finish his work. Su Yan held her hands and asked her if she had talked to Mr. Jang. Yo Rum admitted that she met with Mr. Jang. She said that Mr. Jang told her that Su Yan's health condition was not good. For that reason, she asked Su Yan to stop using his prosthetic. She said that he wouldn't malfunction and have a fever and an infection anymore if he stopped using his prosthetic. Su Yan refused to do that and left that place. He went to Fox Bride Star Cafe and asked Mr. Jang why he told Yo Rum about his health condition. Mr. Jang said that he did it because Su Yan didn't listen to him. He worried about him because his infection had been spread to his kidneys and his muscles worsened. He told Su Yan to stop using his prosthetic because he was in critical condition right now. He said that Su Yan could die if he didn't receive proper treatment for his condition on time. Su Yan said that he didn't care about what would happen to him because it was his life after all. Mr. Jang was angry when he heard that. He made that prosthetic so that Su Yan could continue to live. Su Yan said that he also wanted to live, but he didn't want to spend his life on a wheelchair anymore. He regretted the days that he had spent by using a wheelchair. He thought that 11 years were more than enough for him to live like that. Mr. Jane promised that he would repair Su Yan's prosthetic first. He remembered that he was very happy when he saw Su Yan being able to walk on his feet and move his body again by using the prosthetic he made. Su Yan also felt the same way because his dream finally came true. Back to the present time, while Su Yan was leaving the cafe, he had another nosebleed. Not far from him, Major Joe's subordinates were watching him. Su Yan went to a park and sat on a bench there by himself. Not long after that, Major Joe and his subordinates arrived in that place. Major Joe called in Wu and told him that Su Yan was with him. After he hanged up the call, he ordered his subordinates to finish Su Yan. And Wu panicked and looked for Su Yan right away. Major Joe's subordinates tried to attack Su Yan, but Su Yan managed to fight them back. With the help of his prosthetic hand, he finally managed to defeat all of them. Major Joe was amazed by the superpower that Su Yan had. Yun Su saw Yo Rum crying and approached her. Yo Rum told him that Su Yan was sick right now. She said that she needed to leave soon, but Yun Su asked her not to leave because he needed her right now. Yo Rum asked him to decide if he wanted to become her friend or lover. She said that if Yun Su wanted to become her lover, that he would lose his friend because Su Yan was the only man she loved in this world. While Yo Rum was walking home, she saw Su Yan sitting on the bench by himself, waiting for her to come. She worried when she saw many bruises on his face. Su Yan told her that there was nothing to worry about him. Yo Rum helped to treat his wound and asked him with whom he was fighting this time. She wondered if he fought a gang of thugs this time, and Su Yan said maybe. He admitted that he fought ten men that night. Yo Rum laughed when she heard that. She thought that it was impossible to happen. Su Yan apologized to her for being mad at her and left her like that. Yo Rum said that they were dating, so it was normal for them to fight and get mad at each other. Su Yan asked her to spend a night at his place, but Yo Rum rejected his invitation by kissing his cheek. After that, she left that place and returned home. In Wu saw Yo Rum leaving Su Yan's house. He felt relieved because Su Yan had returned home safely. Su Yan looked at his reflection in the mirror, 
and found out that his infection had worsened. At office, Su Kun saw Mu Jiao leaving He Sung's room. She asked him about what he did there, but he refused to answer her question. The curious Siu Kun then decided to check the document that was left by Mu Jia. The next day, Su Bian talked to En Wu. En Wu said that he didn't know about the people he was dealing with this time, so he suggested Su Yan to run away and go as far as he could if he didn't want to get on his knees and beg for his life. He warned him that those people were very dangerous and that they would hunt him down and harm him for the rest of his life. Su Yan asked En Wu if he managed to run away from them that night. That night, after En Wu left the severely injured Su Yan alone on the street, he was finally captured and beaten up by Manger Zhou and his men. Manger Zhou asked En Wu about the flash drive that he had stolen, and Wu told him that he lost that flash drive. Apparently, Manger Zhou's boss was the director of Gozen School. En Wu received a scholarship from Gozen School, which allowed him to study there until he graduated. But in return, he needed to do everything that Manger Zhou asked him. And Wu told Manger Zhou that he didn't give that flash drive to anyone and that he used a very difficult and strong password to unlock it. But Manger Zhou didn't believe him. He told him to find that flash drive in the place where Su Yan was being hospitalized. He said that he needed to kill Su Yan if he was still alive. And Wu begged Manger Zhou to leave Su Yan alone because he didn't know anything about this problem. Back to the present time, Su Yan told and Wu that he had the flash drive that he left at Fox Bride Star Cafe that night. He admitted that he had seen the content of that flash drive. Meanwhile, Siu Kun was watching His Sung reading a secret letter that was written by Mu Jia. His Sung realized that Siu Kun was watching him. He called in Wu and told him that they got a trouble. He said that there was someone who found out about their plan and they wrote them a secret letter about it. He Sung in and Wu looked at Siu Kun at the same time. While Su Yan was working, he suddenly had a headache that he almost collapsed. Fortunately, Yun Sub saw him and prevented him from falling down. Siu Kun finally confronted En Wu about his plan to turn that airport into a limited company. En Wu admitted that he got an offer to manage that airport from a private sector that was led by Manger Zhou's boss. He said that they planned to increase that airport's income and flights. Siu Kun told him that if they sold the airport stocks to public, then the shareholders would increase the fees at that airport, which would give bad impact to the lives of the people who work there and the passengers who use that airport. After Siu Kun finished talking to En Wu, she came to see He Sung. She asked He Sung to decide if he wanted to continue executing that plan or not. She said that she would give him time until that night to make his decision. In the storeroom, Yun Su gave a bottle of water to Su Yan. Yo Rum called Su Yan, but Yun Su was the one who answered her call. Yun Su told her that Su Yan was busy right now, so he suggested her to talk to him instead. Yo Rum asked him if he had decided to become her friend again. Un Sub said that they would be friends forever. Yo Rum thanked him for willing to become her friend again. After Yeon Su hand up the call, Su Yan thanked him for helping him. While Yo Rum was returning to her room, she ran into Yeon Su. She was surprised when she found out that Yeon Su was still there. She asked him where Su Yan was. Un Su nervously lied to her. Yo Rum became suspicious when she heard his answer. Suddenly, Su Yan left the storeroom and showed up in that place. He told Yo Rum that he was busy managing items in the storeroom. Un Su told Su Yan and Yo Rum that he needed to leave now. Before he left, Su Yan looked at him and blinked his eyes. After that, Su Yan and Yo Rum were searching Terminal 2 together. Suddenly, Su Yan had another nosebleed. He quickly went to the restroom to clean his nose. Yo Rum called Mr. Jang and told him about Su Yan's recent health condition. Mr. Jang panicked when he heard that. He rushed to that airport to check on Su Yan. While Yo Rum was waiting for Su Yan, she saw a group of men entering the restroom. She sensed that something bad was going on. She panicked and looked for Dae Ki immediately. Turned out, those men were Manger Zhou's subordinates. The violent man who hurt Yo Rum another day had been released from prison because of the help of Manger Zhou. Yo Rum finally found Dae Ki and told him that Su Yan was in danger. As soon as Dae Ki heard that, he went to the men's restroom. But when he arrived in that place, he only found Su Yan's walkie-talkie there. He called Mu Jia and told him about it. Mu Jia then checked the CCTV footage. In that CCTV footage, he saw those men taking Su Yan to the parking space. Un Su also saw that CCTV footage. Mu Jia said that he would send a help and ask Dae Ki not to behave recklessly. After that, Dae Ki and Young Ju went to the parking space. Meanwhile, Yo Rum met with Mr. Jang. Mu Jia approached In Wu and told him that Manger Zhou was the right hand man of a very dangerous man who was great at taking care of dirty works without getting his hands dirty. He said that just like in Wu, his best friend also received a scholarship from Gosen School. One day, his best friend, who was working as a journalist at a newspaper company back then, wrote a negative article about Gosen School. 
One week after that article was published, he was found dead in a car accident because of drunk driving. Muja found that accident strained because he knew that his best friend had never consumed alcohol. Because of that accident, the National Intelligence Service began to investigate Major Joe and watch in Wu. Muja asked In Wu about the reason why Major Joe was obsessed with Subian that he decided to kidnap him. In Wu was surprised when he heard that. Suddenly, Siu Kun showed up in that place. Turned out, she had been listening to their conversation secretly. At parking space D, Key and his team finally found Major Joe's subordinates and stopped them. Su Hyun asked Dae Ki to just let them go to prevent more people from getting hurt. Dae Ki said that he couldn't do it because he was ordered to prevent Su Hyun from leaving that airport. Not long after that, more Major Joe's subordinates arrived in that place. Yo Rum told Mr. Jang that the security service team was trying to find Su Hyun. She said that Su Hyun was kidnapped by the men who fought with him last night. Mr. Jang told her that they needed to stop Su Hyun soon. He gave her a device that could allow her to deactivate the prosthetic that Su Hyun used. And Mu promised Siu Kun and Mu Jia that he would bring Su Yun back and that he wouldn't run away this time. He asked Mu Jia to order his team to let Manger Joe's subordinates go and take Su Yun with them. He was afraid that a bigger chaos would happen at that airport and harm more people if they didn't do that. Mu Jia finally contacted Dae Ki and ordered him to withdraw. After that, he contacted the members of the National Intelligence Service who were following Manger Joe's subordinates. In front of the elevator, Dae Ki heard and Wu talk to someone about Su Dian on phone. He finally decided to follow him secretly. And Wu went to an abandoned warehouse. Dae Ki tried to enter that place too, but it was locked. In that abandoned warehouse, and Wu asked Major Zhou where Su Yan was. Major Zhou finally took him to Su Yan. And Wu asked him to let Su Yan go. Major Zhou said that he planned to kill him without getting caught by anyone. And Wu threatened that he would tell everybody about the content of that flash drive. Major Joe was angry when he found out that In Wu still had that flash drive with him. His subordinates then began to attack Su Yan and beat In Wu up until he lost his consciousness. The members of the National Intelligence Service who was spying on Major Joe and his subordinates saw them leaving the abandoned warehouse and taking In Wu with them. Major Joe ordered his subordinates to throw In Wu into the ocean. The members of the National Intelligence Service followed them and called the police. After a while, Su Yan finally managed to defeat all Major Joe's subordinates who attacked him. The violent man who hurt Yo Rum another day tried to run away from that place, but Dae Ki managed to capture him. Suddenly, Su Yan showed up in that place and broke the door of the abandoned warehouse. Dae Ki was surprised when he saw that. Su Yan attacked that violent man and asked him where they took in Wu. A police officer called Mu Jia and told him that he and his team managed to capture 21 men who looked like a gang of thugs. But he said that he didn't find the man who Mu Jia was talking about. Major Zhou's subordinates finally arrived at seashore. They went to that place to throw in Wu into the ocean. Fortunately, Su Yan arrived in that place on time. And Wu saw those gangsters trying to attack Su Yan. He then drove the car and tried to attack them with it. Unfortunately, he lost control of the car which made him almost fall into the ocean. Su Yan tried his best to pull that car to prevent In Wu from falling into the ocean. In Wu told him to just let him go, but Su Yan didn't listen to him. After pulling that car for a while, he finally managed to save In Wu. After that, and Wu asked Su Dian about the reason why he kept following him. Su Dian said that during three years of them becoming brothers, he cooked for him more fun he cooked for his own mother. So even though and Wu was being cold to him, Su Dian still cared and worried about him. And Wu saw the watch that Su Dian used. He remembered that he was the one who bought him that watch as the present for him for being admitted to a university. After he bought that watch, he gave it to Su Dian's mother and asked her to give it to Su Dian. He asked her to pretend that she was the one who bought him that watch so that he would receive it. Su Yan's mother revealed that she would marry another man and live in the United States meanwhile Su Yan would stay at student dormitory. At office, Yum Ju called Yo Rum and told her that Su Yan and Dae Ki were on their way home. As soon as Yo Rum heard that, she told Siu Kun about it. Just like her, Siu Kun also worried about Su Yan. A member of the National Intelligence Service called Mu Jia and told him that he didn't have to worry about Su Yan anymore. He also said that the men they had captured told them that it was only a fight between them. Mu Jia thought that Manger Joe just didn't want to exaggerate this problem. Yeon Ju and Yo Rum were waiting for Su Yan and Dae Ki to return home. After a while, Su Yan and Dae Ki showed up in that place. But suddenly, Su Yan collapsed. Yo Rum panicked and took him to Mr. Jang's house. Mr. Jang told Yo Rum that Su Yan used too much of his power that he damaged the prosthetic that he used for his leg. He said that he had repaired that prosthetic. So there was supposed to be nothing wrong with the machine. The only thing that they needed to worry about Su Yan right now was his infection. 
Mr. Jang told Yo Rum that they needed to save Su Yan soon because he wouldn't be able to survive for the next one week. He said that if Yo Rum couldn't do it, then he would be the one to do it to save Su Yan. After a while, In Wu finally decided to visit his father at hospital. He soon told Siu Kun that he would continue to execute his plan to turn that airport into a limited company. Siu Kun said that she would tell the workers' union about it the next day, and that they would do something to cancel his plan. The next morning, Su Yan finally regained his consciousness. His condition was better right now. Yo Rum told him that she and Mr. Jang kept watching him all night. After Yo Rum and Su Yan finished having a breakfast, Su Yan took the resignation letter that he had prepared before. After that, he gave that resignation letter to Su Kun. Su Kun said that she already knew that Mr. Jang asked Su Yan to live in the United States with him. Su Yan said that he wouldn't most likely return to South Korea. After that, Su Kun told Yo Rum about it. Yo Rum cried when she heard that. She was sad because she would never see Su Yan again. Yo Rum asked Su Yan about the reason why he decided to leave that airport. Su Yan said that it was the best thing that he could do right now. Yo Rum asked him to stay beside her and remove his prosthetic. She promised that she would become his hands and legs. Su Yan didn't want Yo Rum to do that because he knew that it was a difficult thing to do. He asked her to just let him go. After Yo Rum heard that, she cried and hugged Su Yan. At a restaurant, Su Kun gave Su Yan's resignation letter to Mu Jia. That evening, Su Yan, Yo Rum, Yun Su, Yun Ju, and Di Qi were having a dinner together. After they finished having a dinner, Yo Rum asked Su Yan to allow her to spend the night at his place. After that, Yo Rum and Su Yan kissed. The next morning, Yo Rum showed Su Yan the device that Mr. Jang gave her another day. Su Yan held her hand. Yo Rum asked him to stay alive for her. She promised that she would wait him. After that, she kissed him and used that device to deactivate Su Yan's prosthetic. The next scene revealed about Su Yan's past. One afternoon, Yo Rum's father, Jae Young, introduced Mr. Jang to Su Yan. Jae Young told Mr. Jang about Su Yan's health condition. Mr. Jang said that he would help to make a prosthetic for Su Yan. One year later, Siu Kun became the director of Terminal 2 of Incheon International Airport. That afternoon, she was leading a meeting. Yun Su asked Yo Rum if she had heard anything from Su Yan. Yo Rum said that she hadn't heard anything from Su Yan. Un Su wondered why Su Yan hadn't contacted Yo Rum even though he had been leaving South Korea for one year. Yo Rum saw a group of cleaning ladies gathering in that place. Turned out, they talked about a broken partition that they found in that place. They said that there was a man who broke that partition. Yo Rum asked them about the man who did it. Those cleaning ladies said that there was a Russian gangster who got drunk, went berserk, screamed, and used that partition to attack other people earlier. But suddenly, another man showed up in that place and broke that partition with his hand. Yo Rum asked them where that man went. Those cleaning ladies said that that man went to the immigration office. As soon as Yo Rum heard that, she rushed to the immigration office. When she arrived there, she saw Subiyan and hugged him. She was so happy that she could finally reunite with the love of her life again.